All right, Psalm 37, the Bible reads, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger, and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. But the wicked shall perish, and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke, shall they consume away. The wicked borroweth, and payeth not again, but the righteous sheweth mercy, and giveth. For such as be blessed of him shall inherit the earth, and they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment, and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land, and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom, and his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I sought him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace, but the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. The Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. The first topic I want to deal with is only in the first seven verses there. Rest right with God. Rest right with God. See, there's two different ways that you can have relation with God, very clearly revealed in this passage. Either you are the righteous or you are the wicked. In his mind and in the minds of those around you, those that would know you. Obviously, everybody in here desires to be the righteous. We want to be in the group of the righteous. Even as you read through the Proverbs and the Psalms, you'll see those two ideas coming up time and time again. The righteous, the righteous, the righteous, the wicked, the wicked, the wicked. And they serve as the testimony of two different types of people in the world. There are the saved and there are the lost. 
There are the righteous and there are the wicked. I understand there are workers of iniquity and those are another step, another stage of the wicked. One that would never be righteous, though they would even seek after the Lord with tears. They, they have been turned over to that reprobate mind. But the righteous and the wicked in comparison, it's very clear. Righteousness for us comes by Jesus Christ only. By trusting in Him, we are, have His righteousness imputed to us. That's the only way we'll ever stand before God righteous. And yet the wicked, the Bible says, uh, He is angry at every day. The Lord is angry with the wicked every day. And that is, as a whole, the group of unbelievers. And now sometimes you'll see the wicked referred to, and it's a very harsh, very, very dire, very, very... Um, a, a wicked state that they would be in. And most, if we're just left to our own devices, to our own flesh, those that would turn away from their conscience will find themselves further and further down that spectrum of what the wicked would entail. But you'll see also in our own lives that there's people that we would look at and we wouldn't necessarily consider them wicked. But if they're not saved, they're wicked in the sight of God. Why? Because they're still led of their own devices. They're led of their own flesh, of their own hearts, and of their own minds, even though sometimes they would do seemingly good things. But as we read through this, I want to focus on especially what it means to be right with God. What it means to be righteous with God. If you have a right relation to God, it will bring up a right relation to your fellow man. Even the wicked, as we see, you will have a right relation to them. The Bible describes clearly that we should love our neighbor as ourselves. It says that we should love our brethren as Christians. And those are two are very high, very, very esteemed commandments that we ought to take very seriously. But we know also that there is that tier of the wicked in which if we were to bless them, as in somebody bringing a false gospel to your door, we're actually in sin when we bless them. Right. We're not to just hand over fist, just open-ended, bless everybody in this world. We are to have a right relation with God. Right. So how do we deal with evildoers? Well, look at the first two verses here. It says, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. First things that you see here is that the wicked, the evildoers, are not to be feared. We're not to fear them. We're not to be concerned with how they, how they might harm us, how they might hurt us. Fret not thyself. Also, the Bible says here, we're not to be envious against them. Quite often, wicked prosper in their own ways. As it says here, um, in, throughout this passage, you'll read, We're not to envy them. We are not to fear them. Why? Look at verse 2. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the dry herb. Just as soon as your lawnmower, once all this mountains and heaps of snow pass away, will go over the grass and will blow it away and it'll be just chafe in the wind, chaff in the wind, so also is the evildoer. Don't fear them. Don't be envious of them. Their end is to be cut down like the grass. And they are to just wither and be left in that state. They shall be cut down. They shall be withered. And yet, when we see our right relation, it comes from that exact reflection. We need to have the right relation with the wicked. We need to understand that that is their end. And therefore, we don't need to fear them. We don't need to envy them. We don't need to doubt ourselves in comparison with them. That brings about the right relationship. When we read the Bible and we understand how we ought to interact one with another and how we're to interact with the lost world and how we're to interact with the workers of iniquity especially, these are very important things that we must pay attention to. In keeping with the right relation with those that are aside from us, those are, are apart from us, those that are the wicked, we need to then turn our focus because we're not to fear them. We're not to essentially regard them. We're not to be envious of them. They're just as the grass that just blows off of your sidewalk, correct? So forget the rotten. We need to focus ourselves on responsing, responding correctly to the royal, correctly to the king of kings and lord of lords. And if we make that our focus, then again, all of the interaction with the world around us will be guided by that. So how should we rightly respond? How should we rightly react to? How should we rightly connect with the royal king of kings, lord of lords? Verse 3 says, trust. Trust in the Lord and do good. The promise here is, so shalt thou dwell in the land, verily thou shalt be fed. We're supposed to give trust unto God. We're supposed to give our hearts unto him. We're supposed to commit <coughs> our ways unto him and allow him to have all of us in entirety. 
Trust is simple. It's just like that old chair trip. If I was to jump up here and to go, Jamie, catch me. When I let go and fall backwards, I am trusting that he's going to catch me. And in the same way, we trust God when we just let go and we just stop trying to push our own devices, stop trying to push our own ways, stop trying to be our own person, and we just let go. It's entirely up to him to catch us. And we can trust him to do so. That's what it means to put your trust in the Lord. And look what he gives you. Verily you shall dwell in the land. Verily thou shalt be fed. Too often we're worried about where we're going to live, where we're going to sleep, what we're going to eat. Those things that are just better to be left unto the Lord. He'll take care of those things. Amen. There's two things that he promised, and that's, that's raiment and food. You are not going to starve to death as a child of the king. Trust that. That's the right relation that we need to have with God. That's how you can rest and be right with God in the same breath. Delight thyself. Look at verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. We're delighting in God. We're delighting in his word. We're delighting in all he has done for us, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. This isn't like we talked about last week or the week before, where he's going to just give you Ferraris if that's the desire of your heart. Well, if you are delighting yourself in God, you are delighting yourself in the same things that God delights in. And he is going to be diligent to provide for you the desires of your own heart. The heart that is fixed upon him, the heart that is right with him, will receive abundantly all above what we can ask or think. God will bless us abundantly because our delight is in him. That's a right relationship. That's a right connection with God. We need to delight in the Lord, and that's how you receive the desires of your heart. Verse 5, commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. So if we are taking our way and committing it entirely unto God, this is another act of trust, right? My way, okay, I have things that I need to do. I have places I need to go. I have people I need to speak with. That is my way. That is my direction. That is my purpose. If I take that and just commit it unto God, in other words, it becomes His way, it becomes His purpose, it becomes His plan, and how He would act it through me, it says here, he shall bring it to pass. This is how you have a prosperous life. When your life is revolved around trusting God, delighting in Him, and committing your own way unto Him, you now have what would be called in the Christian life a prosperous life. You're going to be fed. You are going to have the desires of your heart. And all that is your way as you walk in that way will be brought to pass according to the scripture here. Trust also in him. Put thy way as if it were her way, or his way. Commit it entirely unto the Lord God, the Heavenly Father. Just give it over to him. And when you do that, the Bible says in verse 6, And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the new day. He shall bring it. Now, it doesn't say I'm bringing my righteousness. It doesn't say I am doing my righteousness. It doesn't say I am bringing my judgments. I am doing my... It says he brings the righteousness. He brings the judgment. And it says light and it says noonday. So these illustrations are pretty neat because if you're in a dark room and you flip on a light, it's boom. It's light instantaneously. The same thing happens with the new day. It's 11, 59, 59 and it's noon. Right? It happens instantaneously. So if you are trusting, if you are delighting, if you are committing all of your ways unto him, then he shall be the one that brings forth the righteousness as the new day. I'm the first one to tell you, and many would agree, that I do not believe in a works-based salvation. Works has nothing to do with salvation. They are completely different. I also do not believe in a works sanctification. What do you mean by that? I don't believe that we need to labor, to toil, to strive in order to be sanctified in Christ. I believe that he has done the sanctification, settled in heaven. And I also believe that any sanctification that happens in our flesh here upon earth is also his work. We need to, like the Bible says, trust, delight, commit our ways unto him, and he shall bring it to pass. Is that not what the Bible says? He shall be the one that brings forth the righteousness as the light, and the judgment as the new day. This has practically happened in my life so many times. I will use smoking cigarettes as an example. I tried 
to quit many times. I tried to be sanctified in that area. I tried to be set apart. And all that my trying and trying and trying did became, it just became trying, I believe, unto God. You know that friend, you know that person that's always coming to you with the same problems. And you give them the same advice, but they just keep trying to do it and trying to do it and trying to do it. They're constantly failing in that area. Eventually that starts to try your patience. I believe God's the same way. You know, I, I just, I'm trying, Lord, I'm trying. God, I'm trying to quit smoking. I'm trying to quit this. I'm trying to quit that. That is work sanctification. That is me in my flesh trying to work and improve my life in that area. Do you know when I finally found success in that area was when I stopped trying and I started to trust, I started to delight, and I started to commit my way unto him. When I finally just said, you know what? I've tried this so many times and I put it away and said, I'm done, Lord, you gotta do it. I can't do it. I can't in and of myself defeat this addiction. I can't in and of myself bring enough will into my flesh to succeed in this area. I'm done trying. Lord, you do it. And that was the last time I ever smoked a cigarette. I gave it entirely unto him. And that's why I say, yes, salvation is not of works, but sanctification is the same way. What we need to do in order to be sanctified in our flesh is to trust God, delight in him, commit thy way unto him. Give it to God. Give it over to God. Allow God to work those things through you. How do we live a righteous life? How do we grow in the things of God? It's the, the formula is right here. If there were ever a formula, you go to the scriptures. I'm not talking a 12-step program like AA will give you or a 20-step program like some drug rehabilitation place will give you. I'm talking about going to the scriptures and looking at what God aligns for us to do in order to have success in the Christian life. And I believe this passage very clearly outlines it. We trust, we delight, we commit thy way unto him, and then what do we do? We trust again. Trust also in his ways. Trust, the Bible says here, it says, He shall bring forth thy righteousness as the new day. Right before that, it says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. So you got trust as like the bookends to delighting in him and committing your way unto him. So it's just, it's just this big cycle. You trust him. You commit your way unto him. You delight in his law. You trust him. You commit your way unto him. You delight in his law. You trust him. And you just keep doing this as part of your life cycle, as part of your routine, as part of your way of having the right relationship with God. And when you've actually embraced that, and this is a hard concept. I mean, we're hard-headed human beings, right? So we think that we can do it ourselves. This is why 99% of the people that are lost out there are lost. It's because they think that they can get their own way to heaven. They think that they're going to stand before God and just go, I've been a pretty good person, and he'll accept it. They think they're going to stand before God and say, I've been religious, I've done all the rituals, and that'll be accepted before God. We're hard-headed, we think we can do it ourselves. But when we as Christians finally realize that, our works aren't salvation. Okay, so when the world figures out that their works aren't salvation and believes on Christ, once you're a Christian, you need to carry that same attitude forward and understand that you are not going to bring this, fr this flesh into submission. You are not going to hold your flesh down and put it in a box and it's just never going to bother you again. Do you know what that becomes? It's like a jack-in-the-box. You take all of your flesh, you take all of your addictions, you take all of your habits, and you stuff them down into this box. And you get them in there and you close the lid. Your life will start to be just like that wheel spinning. And it is just a matter of time before your flesh comes flying back out of that thing again, laughing at you, right? You're never going to suppress your flesh. What you need to do is you need to kill your flesh. You need to crucify the flesh. You need to reckon yourself to be dead, indeed unto sin, alive unto God, and allow Him to work His righteousness through you. The Bible here says He's bringing it. He's bringing your righteousness. He's bringing your judgments. Do you have problems in your life where you're like, I'm just not righteous in this area. Let God bring it. How do you let God bring it? Trust Him. Delight in Him. Commit your way unto Him. You got judgments in your life. You don't think you're making the right decisions. You're always struggling with making the wrong decisions. Judgment comes the same way. You trust, you delight, you commit your way unto him. He shall bring it to pass. And when you finally get that, when you finally understand, imagine the freedom. Remember the freedom. Remember how 
great it felt to have the burdens of your sin lifted from your shoulders when you realized you couldn't work your way into heaven. You had to trust Christ to get you to heaven. Take yourself back to that moment. Remember that moment. Remember how great it felt. We're not trusting a feeling, but man, it felt good, did it not? It felt good to understand the Word of God, to let that implant itself into your body, to let it grow up, to have a new man birthed inside of you, and to just go, my sins are gone, 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 as far as the east is from the west. That was a great day. But when you when you just put that off as some sort of past experience, you're falling short of the Christian life. Just as all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, so many Christians have, have sinned and fallen short of that same glory acting in their lives. That same salvation that Christ provided for you to born you again, to birth you again, is available to you to sanctify you and to bring you onto a place where you're, you're clean in this flesh. You've done better than the day before in this flesh, and you're sanctified. You are growing. And when we finally believe that and trust that and apply that and do that same thing, trust, delight, commit your ways unto him. Trust, delight, commit your ways unto him. And that becomes your cycle. That becomes your lifeblood. That becomes the heartbeat beating in your every single day. Verse 7, rest. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. All of this trying to be clean, all this trying to do good, all this trying to be right, all this trying to please God, all you're doing is trying his patience. God wants you to rest. Did he not say, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I shall give you rest? That's right. Amen. He said that. Yes, to bring those that are lost, to bring those that are not saved, that they would be born again and they would have rest for their souls. Their souls would no longer be weary and trying to get back to the God that they're separated from. But that same promise is available to each and every one of you believers, whereby you don't have to labor. You don't have to be heavy laden. You don't have to be bogged down with the cares of suppressing sin. You don't have to be trying to stuff all of your nasty habits into a box before you put on your nice dress or before you put on your nice suit and tie and go to church. You don't have to try to clean up your act in order to look good to people. And meanwhile, you know what rotten things you've just done 20 minutes ago. You don't need to live that way. You don't need to be fighting the flesh that way. The the flesh is done. Reckon it to be dead and rest in Christ. If you're laboring, if you're heavy laden, you're not living the Christian life correctly. What we need to do is just like it says here, trust in the Lord. Delight in his statutes and in his ways. Commit your own ways unto him and let him help you to dwell in the land and be fed. Let him give you the desires of your heart. Let him bring your ways that align with his ways to pass. That's successful Christian living. That is how you rest in the Lord. Heavenly Father.